Alright, hey, he's Mega here, and I got a Alta Redshift video, alright? Alta Redshift SM video. So, uh, so one of the things that you need to get on a racetrack, or at least a kart track for supermoto racing, uh, are uh, axle sliders, alright? Um, you need axle sliders, foot peg sliders. I already made them, I made them last night. Check that video out, alright? I'll put a link at the end of the video if you want to learn how to put sliders on your uh, Redshift, okay? And, uh, and then hand guards, all right? Hand guards or like a bar end, all right? Like a bar end weight or something. So so when your bike goes down, it slides and it doesn't cartwheel, all right? That's what you don't want it to do. If it if it cartwheels, then it's what's called a yard sale and parts just start flying off of your bike and you don't want that, <laughs> okay? But also, it also protects the racetrack if your bike went down, all right? Um, and it protects your bike from getting all scratched up, all right? So. So that's that's the reason that you they want you to have these sliders, all right. So in this video, I'm gonna build some sliders for the front forks, all right, or the front axle. Uh, it's not too hard on the red shift because the axles are hollow, all right. So if the axles are hollow, you can do the little trick with the uh, the all thread, all right. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make a supermoto slider for the front. I'm not gonna lie, I had ordered some from Warp 9 Racing, but I have to have some by this weekend and I don't think they're gonna get here in time, so I have to make I have to make this thing here, alright? So but the good thing is the the set I'm making is very inexpensive. I, I think I paid ten dollars for the for the pucks, alright? which are skateboard wheels is what I'm gonna use. And then uh it's um it was like five dollars for the all thread. Maybe it probably doesn't cost more than maybe like twenty dollars, twenty or thirty dollars in parts, all right? And that's probably enough parts to do the rear of the bike also. Um, I will do the rear in another video, all right? But this one will focus on the front, all right? So let's take a look at the front wheel and I'll, we'll take a look at the ingredients and then we'll start making it, all right? I don't think it'd take that long, hopefully, all right? All right, let's get, get to it. Okay, so here's the front of the bike, all right? That's where we'll be focusing on. Right now, I should probably put it on the stand. Well, well, let me let me go put it on. Okay, I got my bike on the stand here, so it's a little easier to work with. Um, so the front of the bike is where we're going to be focusing on. Uh, so you're going to want to. We're, we're going to do a stick a threaded rod through here, all right? And then we're just going to put wheels on there. And this is what we're working with. The, the axle is hollow, guys, and it's big enough to stick my thumb through it. <laughs> so there's a big hole in it. So we got to kind of make up for that all right um if you just stick a threaded rod in there and and your bike goes down it's gonna flop around all right you don't want you want to take up all that slop in there all right so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a some kind of spacer that um that will uh that will prevent the rod from moving up and down a lot all right so and then here's the uh the other side fortunately the other side is also all the way through okay I haven't even taken the wheel off of this bike, so, um, but, uh, but yeah, so this one has the nut on it on this side, so it's going to stick out a lot. You don't really need a spacer on this side, all right, but we will, we will be fabricating, um, the spacer so the rod doesn't flop around, um, but we were, we are you're going to need a spacer because when we put the puck on there, it's going to hit the fort guard, all right, so it needs to be spaced out a little bit. Uh, maybe like one inch or something, especially on this side. So see how see how this one has the nut sticking out? That's already a spacer, all right? This one doesn't have anything sticking out, so we're going to have to add something on top of it, like, you know, a bunch of washers or something. We need a spacer so the puck will clear the fork leg, okay? Uh, you don't want to touch the fork leg, right? All right, so, uh, yeah, let's go... Uh, Let's go hop to it. I'll show you how we're okay, going to do I it. I have assembled here the ingredients to do it. This is actually enough, almost enough parts to do the front and the back, all right? But we're just going to focus on the front in this video. The important part is the pucks, all right? These are the pucks. I got these on eBay, all right? Made in China. Boohoo, all right? But uh, I got some red ones from my red chip because my red chip is uh, white and red, okay? So this matches the color of the red chip pretty well. I will put a link in the description of the video where I ordered these. I got them on eBay, like I said. They're skateboard wheels, and you want to get the hardest durometer uh, skateboard wheels, all right? Hayes Mega used to rollerblade a lot, and they have different, but they call it durometers, all right? And the higher the number, the harder the wheel, all right? You want to get the hardest ones as um, the lower the number, the more grip you have, the higher the number, the harder it is, 
and the more it'll slide okay so think of it that way we want our bike to slide and we don't want it to grip so you want the hardest one as possible all right and it's not the first time Hayes Omega has made one of these and I have actually tested it and it works okay it will protect your bike when it slides all right um, yeah so uh, I've chosen to use a 516 threaded rod all right you could probably use a 3 8 I have a 3 8 let me see Oh yeah, I got a 3.8 and it works pretty good actually. Maybe we'll use the 3 8 <laughs> Okay, I, I have a, uh, yeah, you know what? I don't have the, uh, I don't have a cap nut for the 3 8 though. That's the problem. Um, so, all right, you're going to need some kind of, um, some kind of washer that will fit inside the, um, the wheel. Now you could probably just use a, the wheel bearing if you want. But it's gonna it, it's gonna make the nut stick out, and you don't want to make the nut stick out. You want to have the nut as far in there as possible. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grind these down to size, so they'll fit in there, right? And we'll just press it in so it won't fall out. All right. Um, and that's why I got these. Um, you know what? I might go with the three eighths. Three eighths fit in there pretty good. Yeah, I think it will. Hmm. Okay. And then you're gonna need some kind of nuts. Um, so this is for the, this is for a 516, but this is a 516 um, locking nut. All right, they're really expen inexpensive if you buy them from like Lowe's. All right, the S the S I, I hate to suggest if you're in America, buy S A E stuff because it's a lot easier and cheaper to find. All right, um, and then an acorn nut. All right, or a cap nut. Um, basically, what you're going to use this for is you're going to turn the uh, the rod into a bolt. All right, it's going to be a custom sized bolt. Basically, is what it is. All right, and also this helps it slide. All right, this is it's nice and smooth on top. This is a really nice one. I wish I hadn't used a really nice one. <laughs> it's, it's like a chrome one or something, man. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to use for a spacer. This is a uh, a sway bar bushing. All right, uh, if you have these old sway bar bushings lying around, um, the ones that go like it's certain sway bar bushings use these little donuts then I would use the stiffest one that you can find, okay? This is what we're gonna use for our spacer, okay? On the side that doesn't have anything. And then I've got these, uh, these are the spacers that we're gonna use for the uh, the nut side, all right? And I, I, this does go in here, right? Oh, almost, we have to make it bigger. <laughs> oh, that one almost fits. Um, yeah, you know what, I haven't made a, I haven't made a slider with 3 8 um, uh, threaded rod. Let's try it. All right. Um, the axles are so freaking damn uh, big on this thing that I think we could do it. All right. Um, I, I I feel the bigger it is, the you know, the more the the stronger it'll be. Okay. So let let's give it a whirl. I'll try the three eighths. All right. I never made a three eighths. Um, I've only used five sixteenths and like a quarter. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So the first thing let's do is let's go. Uh, Let's go make the washers for the pucks, okay? So all you got to do is grind these down the size so they fit in there. So and you so you could press it in there. And how you could press it in there is just get a socket and pound it with a hammer. It's pretty easy, okay? So let's take care of it. Okay, lucky me. I found some uh I found some washers. They fit in there perfectly, all right? So this one perfect, right? It's in it. so you want it a little bit resistant so it won't fall out, all right? This one's a little big, all right? This one I can press in there. So um, I will give you guys the sizes for these two. I just found these in my like bin of stuff. <laughs> okay, you can also make the holes bigger too. So uh, one of these I have to make the hole bigger because it doesn't fit in the for the three eighths. All right, but this washer is. 21, 21.6 millimeters, and this washer is bigger, should be bigger, 22.3 millimeters, all right, so you want something somewhere around 22, 23 millimeters, all right, um, the diameter for the hole is 21.6, all right, so yeah, like a 22 is what you want, yeah, like a 22 will fit in there pretty snug right so this since this one fits already yeah this is this one fits already I'm gonna stick it in there all right press it in there nicely and that's done we're done
you don't have to do anything now if they don't fit if you don't have one that fits or if it's too big what you can do is uh you can grind it in a grinder okay actually this this is this is almost perfect yeah so this one see this one is a little too big it doesn't go in there um you're gonna want to grind this down all right make the diameter the outer diameter a little smaller this one a little loose but it'll it'll stay in there see but if i like that it'll fall out if i press it it'll fall out but so i think i'll keep that one uh ideally you want it like this one all right like it's around a 22 millimeter i think that's what this one was 22.3 or something if it's a little big it's okay because you can press it in there this it's it it's malleable, so it's all right, it, it's move, it's flexible. Okay, so one of them is done. Okay, and yeah, I have to do minimum grinding. The two of them is done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For this one, I have to make the hole bigger, though. So I'm going to go get, I'm just going to go ream this out so this fits, all right. And I've got, I don't have any acorn nuts. Ideally, you want acorn nuts. I'll, I, you can, I can, I'll get them later, but I'm going to use a nylon locking nuts, all right, so they don't come apart on you. Um... You don't have to use any like kind of Loctite on it. That's what I like to use. Okay. Um, all right. Let me go make this hole bigger because it doesn't fit. Okay. Okay. What I'm gonna do is gonna open up the hole with a, a Dremel and a, a grinding bit. Okay. You get the picture. Just make the hole bigger. Okay. There it is. Rod goes through the hole. There you go. All right. Cool. Now we just. Press it down to there, and we're we got a puck. There you go. All right, so that's your puck. Maybe I might want to build another one with the thing, but so both of these will go like that. Okay. Oh, see, then that's that's why you need to have one that fits in there tightly, so so that doesn't happen. All right, guys. But I think I'm going to use this. I, I might make a better one later, all right? But that'll work for now. Okay. It's got to fit in there like precisely or else or else it'll go through this thing. All right. The, the step in there. You don't want it to go through the step. Okay. Uh, pucks are done. Uh, now we're going to have to. Okay. Let me show you what's going on with the spacers. Okay. So where did I get this from? Uh, this is actually, uh, I think it's from a bar end mirror is where I got it from. All right. Um, it's a bar end mirror that like I didn't use anymore. All right. That's, a, that's what it's for. All right. Um, so if. You got like a piece of like like an aluminum spacer or something. You can use that. Um, I have something similar. Where is it? Oh, right here. You could probably use something like this, okay, as a spacer. All right, but you'd have to make the hole bigger for that. And uh, and we're gonna I'm gonna wind up using this thing. All right, a lathe, okay. Um, if you don't have a lathe, you can use um, a grinder, okay. But uh, so here's the plan. So what's going on here? All right. So my idea is I don't need that big a spacer on this side. I need something to prevent the uh, um, the rod from flopping around, all right? And that's what this is going to be, all right? And I think the hole, this hole needs to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to make the hole a little bigger, but let's not worry about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to put this on the lathe, all right? And we're going to turn this part down to the same size as this, okay? I'll go measure it. Um, but that, that's going to sit in there. Okay, the reason is because we want this to fit on top of this. Now, if I was to put this straight on here, it wouldn't fit there. See, it's it's touching the fork leg here. All right, so that's why we need to space it out a little bit, something like this. All right, and it's just going to sit there like that. Okay, and this is already, this already has the hole, all right? It's also, this will keep this side from flopping around, all right? And it fits in there nicely. Just got to make sure it's tight, okay? Not too tight, but... And there you go. See? And so now the skateboard wheel is spaced nicely where it's going to protect the, the bottom part of the fork here, okay? And your fork guard. It's pretty sweet, right? Okay, so that's the plan for that side. Okay, on this side, we're going to have this, all right? This is already the spacer. It's, it's already spaced out enough, all right? We can actually just stick it in there, but we need something to keep it from flopping around all right the rod from flopping around so that's what we're going to use this for okay this is going to go in there and it's going to act as a little bit of a spacer and a plate and also it's kind of tapered also so it, it self aligns to the skateboard wheel all right so awesome so we're going to make sure this these holes the rod go through these holes when you get the rod. okay 
So perfect. Uh, the sway bar bushing is a go. All right, it fits in there perfectly. It doesn't no, not a whole lot of schlop. This one too tight. All right, so I just gotta. We're gonna open this up with like a drill bit or something, and then um, then yeah, we'll be good to go. Okay, so let me open that so up. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn this down. All right, I'm gonna stick it in the lathe, and we're gonna turn this down so it's small enough to fit in here. Okay, I will measure what we gotta we gotta put in there. Okay, I'm gonna measure the hole, the caliper. Let's get a general idea. 17.22, all right? And we need to, all right, 17.22, 17.2 is the hole diameter. And then what we gotta make this 17.2, all right? So we gotta go 22 to 17, all right? Like five, we gotta cut like five millimeters off, all right? So I think, was it 21 again? Forgot already. <laughs> He's like, it's got a bad memory. Seventeen, seventeen point four now. All right. But anyway, seventeen. So probably when we get to like eighteen, we'll we'll slow down. All right. So my goal is to turn this down to eighteen millimeters. Okay. Okay. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna use this wonderful device, a lathe. All right. I was using it last night. And made a big mess. All right, we're gonna stick this in here and hopefully we can center it. Make sure it's flat. Well, it's gonna be tough to get this flat because it's not, the back isn't flat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this open so the rod will fit through it. Um, I'm gonna, this is a 3 8 drill bit. I'm gonna go one lower than it, all right, and then see if the rod fits. And if it doesn't, we'll go up to the 3 8 Sure, this drill bit center though. Okay, here we go. Oh, it already goes through. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely not. <laughs> that's definitely not gonna work. We need a three eighths. So this hole is actually pretty close to what we need, actually. So All right, here we go. I'm not too worried about scratching it because uh, the um, when we when we turn it down, it's gonna it's gonna take that material out. Hopefully I drilled it straight. <laughs> okay, rod goes through now. All right, good. Okay. Now we just got to turn this down so it's small. Okay, I got this strange apparatus going on here. All right, so I have a spacer here so I can push this out far enough where um, where we can use the cutting part. All right, because uh, because if this was in here, it would hit the this the blade would hit this. Okay, so yeah, I'm right, gonna go start turning it down now. Um, it's pretty, I got it centered pretty good. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty well balanced. It's probably a little wobbly, but yeah, it's the best I could do. Haze <laughs> make is by no way, no means a uh, um, lathe technician expert, all right? I just kind of pl play around with this stuff. All right, it's pretty, it's pretty neat stuff though. Get the picture? <laughs> yeah. Here's a close up. So yeah, we're just making so if you don't if you guys don't have a lathe, the next best thing to do is just get a get a grinder or get a Dremel grinding bit and just just work around it, alright? But the, the lathe is more precision. Uh, that's, that's why when I have a lathe I want to use it. So. <laughs> okay.
All right, you got it? Okay, I'm just gonna keep at it. Uh, every once in a while, I will get the caliper out and check. All right, so we have to have like 18, I think is what we need, right? All right, I got 21. <laughs> I've got a, a long way to go. I think we were at like 22, so I've done about half a millimeter. It's a lot of work left to do, okay? All right. Okay, I've turned it down to 18, pretty much, and it's not small enough yet, all right? So we're gonna keep on going. So what I'm gonna do is just keep on, keep on grinding it. Look at, check it out. That's how much we've grinded a lot, like two to three millimeters. So all that, all that not blue stuff is what we grinded pretty much. All right, so keep on going. So I'm just gonna keep on cutting it a little bit at a time and then fitting it in there. If it's a little bit loose, it's okay. We can put tape around it, all right? Okay, okay here we go, guys. Check it out. Boom, fits in there. It's a little bit loose, a little wobbly. Um, let me see if I can put some tape around it and it'll, if it'll take up that slack, but that's fine. If it moves around a little bit, that's okay. All right, it's just gonna be clamped down anyways. Okay, I got tape on half of it. No? Okay. Take a little bit more tape off. Looks so like I can find a skinnier tape. Nope. Yeah, it's really a... Uh... Uh, so what I could do is uh, I could grind it. I could I could turn it down a little more and then put tape, or I could just use this. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, there you go. Now it's nice and tight. Oh no, I just pushed the tape in. <laughs> okay, whatever. That's fine. I think we're just gonna go with that. That's fine. If it's a little loose, that's fine. It's not, it's not a big deal. Okay, there we go. So spacer's done. Uh, we can we can pretty much. Uh, okay, voila. Finish there it, it is. All right. I noticed I didn't even drill it straight. There's some blue inside there. Yeah, man. It's not precision work, guys, but it'll get the job done. <laughs> all right. Okay. I got all the goodies assembled. There's my rod. All right. So I'm gonna stick my rod through one of these guys. All right. Stick it in. Oh, that's a tight fit, man. I thought it went in there. Okay. Yep, just like that. Okay. Well, let's go look at what's going on, on the other side. Okay. On the other side, we're going to have our spacer, right? Right down there. See, and that centers it nicely already. This sway bar bushing is awesome. All right, we're going to pull that out. I wish I had a cap nut, man. I gotta get a cap nut. Um, so what we're gonna do is let's let's put the uh, let's put a locking nut on there already. Okay, we're pretty much at the home stretch, guys. All right, I'm gonna thread this on here. But we want to thread it all the way, and we can't do that because <laughs> because freaking uh, I can't hold that the thing. Probably have to get two nuts on the other side. Well, that gives that, that gives us a general idea of what we need. Oh man, I need the. I wish I wish I'd use a bigger washer, guys. So that's why you want the washer. In. Okay, so that's gonna sit in there like that. Okay. Uh, what we might want to do is cut a little extra, and then we'll grind whatever. You know, you kind of want a precision fit, but it doesn't have to be super precision. The thing is, if the re if the rod is too too long, it'll stick out. All right, you don't want it to stick out too much. All right, because it'll scratch the track and stuff all right so i feel man that's this washer no bueno okay i want to pull it tight and then that then we'll know where we need to cut and right, we'll cut a little extra and then i'll grind it to to fit all right uh, but let me get a get a marker okay i'm gonna pull it tight real tight all right and then probably just in front of the the wheel we'll cut it right here okay yeah that's, mm, you know what we should do extra 
We should do extra because the nut is a uh, the the nut isn't going in all the way on the other side. So I'll cut it on the outside a little bit. Let's go two more threads out. But we're going to guarantee that it's too long. Okay. All right. The one the one that the longest black marks is the one that we're going to cut. Okay. All right. Here it goes. We're going to go take it out. Oh yeah, what have I done here? <laughs> okay, we'll take it out from the other end. I think I want to make a new washer for one of these. But for now, this will work. See, so when I pull the thread out, it takes the washer out with it. That's why you want it to be tight, guys, so that doesn't happen. Okay, okay I got the aluminum soft jaws so I don't mess up the threads. It should be fine. Uh, the th these are the threads that are going to be inside the... Um, the thing. Wow, it eats up a, a good chunk of the... That wheel is enormous, man. <laughs> it's going to eat up a good chunk of the thing. Alright, here it goes. Will you even cut this, man? Barely. Wow, I think I should have bought two of these, man, because this is not going to be long enough to do the back now. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe that thing was that long, man. All right, well, anyway, there she is. All right, so now we're going to have to um, play with the length, all right? And, um, and I'm going to make sure that cut is a little bit flatter, all right? It's, that's a horrible Okay, thing. I already know this <laughs> okay. end should be good, all right? It's, it's already, it's tapered a little bit. That's nice. Okay, I think it's Hillman that makes this. Uh, so we're just gonna flatten this and then taper this side a little bit, okay. Hey guys, moment of truth, here we go. All right, we got all, we got all the components, all right, the rod, the pucks and the spacers, all right? So let's put one of the locking nuts in there, all right? Put one of the pucks in there, okay? Put the spacer, okay? And put it through the, rock, the axle. Hey, hey, and here's the other side. We're gonna put our spacer there. We'll put our puck. And now, ideally, it would be good to use an acorn nut, like I mentioned, but I don't think it's gonna work in this case. All right, now you're gonna have to use two 14 millimeters, which is annoying. If you have the acorn nut, I think one is a different size. I think it, one will be like a 13 and one will be a 14 or something. So you could use. You don't have to use the same size, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I'm just going to tighten it. Okay, and then my suggestion is to tighten it until the until the uh, um, the pucks don't move anymore. Okay, so they're, they're moving now, I don't know why. Okay, and if a little bit of thread sticks out, that's okay. Uh, actually, I think that'll work. Yeah, that works. So the problem with the 3 8 size is that they stick out a lot, all right? I, now, I think with the top nut, it'll be okay. Uh, I mean the, um, the acorn nut, but I don't, I don't have the acorn nut for this. All right. Okay, get a little more. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there you go. I think that's perfect. All right, I don't think we need to shorten it anymore. It looks good. All right, man, that is a that is a long axle, man. Holy moly, dude. Uh, I'm going to have to go buy more threaded rod to do the rear now. Okay, so, but there it is, guys. Okay, final product. All right, so there's 
the puck, spacer, the threaded rod is in there. Then you've got the uh, the locking nut, all right, nylon locking nut. Like I mentioned, you it's better to use an, uh, one acorn nut and one locking nut. That's what I like to use, okay? Um, but uh, I don't have an acorn. I have to go find one. I have to go to like Home Depot or something. So as you can see, if it, if you press it or hit it or something, it's not going to move, all right? Because we have that spacer, and it, it's it's not it's not going to move, all right? Same thing with this side. This line, this side may move. I'm not sure, because uh, but that that sway bar bushing was perfect. All right, as you can see, it clears. What is it? The the fork guard by about one finger. All right, that's about like half an inch. All right, maybe a little more, about like an inch and maybe like yeah, almost an inch. Okay. Same thing with the other one. This side is still this side sticking out a whole lot. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this side is a lot. Sticking out a lot, man. This side, not so much. All right. But, uh, but yeah, there it goes. I got it. Okay, yeah. So when you get to this point, just play, it's it's better to make the rod a little bit longer. I think that's fine. Like I said, tighten it to where you know you can't really move the pucks anymore, or you can't rotate the pucks anymore, and then you'll be fine. All right. But there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks great. It's and it's the it's it's the same red as the bike. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> All right. So the the drawback to this is that you'll have to take the well. It's I think no matter what, even if I had some aftermarket ones, no matter what, um, you're gonna have to if you're gonna remove the wheel, you got to take the uh, the sliders off. Okay. Um, it's not a big deal. It takes takes a minute, right? Less than a minute to do it. You just need two 14s and boom, it comes out. Yeah, so if you can get a, but if you can get a top nut and maybe weld the top nut onto there so it doesn't move anymore, would be good. All right, but it might touch the washer. Um, I might make a new washer for one of these, all right, because it's, it, it's, um, it's like just a perfect size. You actually want it to be a little bit bigger so you can press it in there so it won't fall out anymore, okay? And like I said, you can use a, uh, a bearing, all right, a skateboard bearing. You can put it in there, but then the, the nuts will stick out a lot, all right? This is this is okay. This will, it, yeah, it's going to scratch the track, but not that, that bad, all right? That's why I say use a acorn nut because it's smooth, okay? But if a little bit of the thread sticks out, that's okay. It's not a big deal. At least you tried, right? <laughs> All right, it's Mega here, and that is it. All right, so we've made the front uh, axle sliders for a Alta Redshift SM. All right, uh, it's more specific, Alta Redshift SM 39. Okay, um, and these are what are rocking. Uh, this is a uh, how much did this cost me to make? Probably around like 20 bucks. All right, something like that. Um, something like this, but made by like a professional company probably cost you like 50 60 bucks okay now it took me about two hours to to fabricate it but not too bad all right and then yeah i had to take trips to the hardware store and all that stuff and i had to look for all the bolts and everything once you got all the ingredients together it's not so bad all right um the hardest part is to make that spacer all right so it doesn't flop around uh what you could do yeah just be be creative all right hayes mega just used stuff he had lying around in his garage I keep a lot of stuff just in case I'm going to fabricate stuff like this, and um, and yeah, so it worked out pretty well. So I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I used the 3 8 rod. You can probably use a 5 16 rod, all right, um, threaded rod, or it's called an all thread is also what it's called, all right. You can find it at your local hardware store. I got this at Lowe's, all right. I think you can get it. You can get it at Home Depot also. Um, it's in the section with all the fabrication materials like um, like the box tubing and yeah tubing and stuff they'll have all sorts of threaded rods like this okay and they got different sizes uh, uh, and and they're the thing is they're SAE so you're gonna have to use SAE bolts all right or SAE uh, nuts is what I want to say all right but but the the the, bre the beauty about using SAE stuff is they're so cheap because I guess like contractors use them a whole lot they're like everywhere, right? The metric stuff is actually harder to find, <laughs> okay? But it does take a 14 millimeter to tighten these ones, okay? Um, yeah, like I said, you could use 5 16 also. Uh, 5 16 will be smaller and it won't stick out as much, so that's a good thing, all right? You could use any kind of skateboard wheels you want, but like I mentioned, 
use the ones that have the highest durometer. I think these are 99A or 101A, something like that. Around 100A is, is really hard, all right? It's, it's hard as a rock, okay? <laughs> it's pretty much a plastic, okay? Um, so it slides really well, all right? Okay, there you go. Uh, so I will probably have another video making the rear one. I think the rear one will be will be easier because we don't want to need a spacer on the side with the with the cap nut on it. Um, but we will need to make another one of those spacers for the other side. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. So that's how you make a front axle slider for an Alta Redshift SM. All right. Uh, will this work on a for an MX? Let's say you converted your MX to a Supermoto. Uh, maybe, all right. Um, I do know that the SM has, I think the SM has a wider fork. <laughs> okay, I think it's wider. Maybe, uh, I'm not 100. I think the triples are wider. I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, this is really, it's really, really wide, man. <laughs> I, I was surprised. I was like, it took up the whole rod, so I have to go buy another rod. All right, guys, um, and I have to go find some cap nuts. So I think that's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. Okay, thanks for watching. Here's Miguel. I hope this was an educational and entertaining video. Here's Miguel.